Last time we introduced, and in a sense defined, the idea of an inertial frame, i.e. any frame in which objects that don't experience any forces don't appear to accelerate. Now, let me walk you through a simple thought experiment. If I take a ball and I throw it, what features of this ball depend on which reference frame I choose and which things don't change? Well, the ball's mass, its color, its shape, for example, don't really seem to change based on how I look at them. If the ball is bouncing, the total number of, ba of bounces um, will be the same in any frame. These, seem, these may seem like easy, obvious things um, that are perhaps not worth pointing out, yet when we'll start questioning what we've come to know as reality and relativity, these ideas will serve as our steadfast anchors to sanity. Now, what things do change? Well, the ball's velocity or speed um, will depend on which frame I choose. A frame moving left will see the ball move at a different speed than one moving right. The ball's position will also change based on based off which frame I choose. So where I define zero changes where the ball where, where the ball will be located. So it seems like there are some things we don't need frames to describe, like mass, color, and shape, um, intrinsic properties of particles, since these are the same in all frames. Yet some things have no meaning unless described by a frame, like position, and speed. So if somebody says something is moving with speed s, you'll know they're crazy unless they give you a frame. Now you can appreciate how physicists must have felt when they were extremely excited to have finally unified the laws of electricity and magnetism in the 1800s into Maxwell's four equations, only to discover that those same equations gave a prediction for the speed of light but make no mention to any frame the speed is relative to. They even conduct an experiment later to see how light moves in different frames, only to discover that it moved exactly the same. How can these e equations predict that light has a speed but not give us a frame, since speed is something that only ever makes sense in a frame? Well. It turns out that there is only one way for light to have a speed, but not tell us which frame. That is, if light has the sp same speed in all frames. This crazy yet simple idea, predicted by Maxwell's equations and undisputed by all experiments, is in fact true. And it leads us to unveil some more fascinating aspects of our universe in our journey of relativity.